The tomatoes were a bust. The corn was a bust. But welcome back to Hidden Oaks Homestead and welcome to my summer garden. I am in North Florida in gardening zone 8B and I'll show you around of what I've grown, what I've struggled with and what I've had a real great success with this year. My garden quadrupled in size since last year and I added a lot more trellises, I added more raised beds and I added a whole other huge section of in-ground gardening. We had prepared those beds as good as we could with uh, amendments to feed the ground and feed the soil and we planted in there this year. We did not wait out a season to see and get everything established. We planted right away and we had initially some really good results. Those initial good results turned bad fairly quickly. We had a good initial harvest on our corn and our tomatoes looked amazing initially and thrived beautifully. They set fruit and then we had some weather challenges. On the one hand, it stayed much cooler than it would usually at this time of year. And so the tomatoes struggled a little bit to get to the point where they set fruit. Then we had too much heat and they struggled through that. Then we had too much rain all at once and we struggled through that. And now we're back to heat. Tomatoes will not set fruit or produce above a certain temperature. So they're a little bit more finicky than I would like them to be, a little bit more maintenance than I have time for. And with my work schedule and with all the travel that I've been doing, I have had a horrible tomato harvest this year. So we struggled with tomatoes. We struggled with the corn, though this year was the first year that we actually did have a good corn harvest. We planted a lot and about half of what we seeded out did not do well. For our corn, a lot was the weather, too much rain, too much heat, and it didn't do well. And I do think it probably had something to do with the soil quality as well. We're going to try again next year and um, try a different planting method. If you've been successful growing corn, share what you've done and share what has worked for you because I would love to learn and give it another try next year. So the tomatoes were a bust, the corn was a bust, but everything else is doing really great. And even now in the July summer heat, we have to harvest every day. We have probably pulled about 120, 130 pounds of produce out already, maybe more, and we keep on harvesting every day. During the warm season, we have our cucumbers producing, we have tons of peppers, we have tons of okra, and uh, some of the other things that we've planted are just starting to set fruit. So I'm excited about seeing how they progress as well. But struggles aside, I wanted to share what actually worked really well for us this year. We grew okra for the first time last year and it thrived. It's a great plant here for 8B for the south. It does extremely well and you can literally harvest fresh plants every day. I have been working on this garden for three years and every year I try to expand it and I try to grow more food and I try to experiment with new crops that I hadn't tried out previously. This year I was planting in stages just because I knew that I was going to be gone a lot and I couldn't manage everything at once. On one hand, there's a lot that goes into gardening. On the other hand, you really don't have to do a whole lot if you don't want to. It all depends on what kind of time do you have on your hand to actually put into your garden? What kind of time do you have on your hand to then preserve 
whatever you grew because the last thing you want to do is grow a lot of food and then let it go to waste. The garden and the preserving is pretty much all on me. The kids and Chip are out here helping here and there, but it's pretty much my kingdom. This is where I come to relax. This is where I come to find some peace and quiet. And this is where I come to grow our food. And I'm trying to grow as much as possible for our family to avoid having to go to the store for any essentials that we eat a lot of. One of our experiments this year is ground cherry and we are also growing roselle. I'm extremely happy with the roselle. It's getting very big and it looks like we're setting fruit soon. We're hoping to be ready to harvest around October for the roselle and I'm really looking forward to making some jam and teas to get me through the winter. In the hopes of having more time, I did buy additional trees this year because you can never have enough trees. However, I didn't plant them yet. So that is on me and I'm hoping that I'll be able to just get them through the winter in the pot and then get them in the ground in the summer as the ground warms up. We have some additional shrubs that we also have in pots right now that I have not had a chance to put in the ground either. I have not had a chance to get my garden to where I want it to be this year, but we have made some strides. The vegetable garden is in okay shape. The herb garden is in pretty good shape. I'm happy with that. And some of what I wanted to do with the sitting area and the herb garden, we'll just have to wait until winter, until it cools down around here. It looks like we have a volunteer sweet potato <laughs> producing. Look, look! Ooh, raspberries are growing! I'm excited about that! Not a blackberry, what is that? This is a grape. This is grape, correct. Look, it's got little grapey th thingies growing. <gasps> look! Aww! So cute! Let's see how everything's doing. This is looking good. You know what that is? The mint. This is mint. This is chocolate mint. Who's mint? Actually, this is peppermint. And this is lemon mint. Zach, what is this? Jalapeno. Good job. That basil is growing beautiful. Look at that. That's getting nice and big. are out of control. That's what I get for being gone for three days. They're way too big. What are we gonna do with them? Oh, we got beans. Look. Looky, looky. We got beans. Do you know what that is? Beans. Peas. Ah, close. These beans are ready to come out. What's up, gardening cat? What's up, man? He likes to hang out out here. This is his favorite place. Yes, we have struggles in Florida with warm season planting. There are a lot of things that are trying to eat everything that I'm trying to harvest. So I'm looking forward to putting a winter garden in because we are dealing with less of a temperature and rain problem and we're also dealing with less bugs. So I'm excited to get a winter garden started and get that in the ground in the next two to three months. 
and see how that is doing in comparison to my spring garden. On the other side, we have a very long growing season. So some of the crops that you wouldn't be able to necessarily grow outside of a greenhouse in colder growing areas, we're able to grow almost all year long down here. With the Florida heat struggles, I have more adjustments to make to really set up a good summer and warm season garden for the years to come. There's a lot of plans in the works of, of what I would like to build and what I would like to establish to really get to an overall bigger success in regards to growing our own food. Gardening for me is about getting connected with the food that you grow, being able to feed your family, being able to put food away for future, and being able to get outside and really soak up the sun and the rain and the dirt and help you be healthy. If you are in USDA growing zones eight and nine, I would love to hear from you. I would love to hear what has worked, what hasn't worked, what have you struggled with, what have you had the biggest successes with, and let's learn from each other. I would love to hear from you. I would love to learn from you. I hope you have learned something from my struggles and my mistakes as well. And I will see you in the next video.